So let's take a look at uh, this new lesson here. So this is going to be called limits at infinity, horizontal asymptotes, and slant, or our book calls them oblique, asymptotes. And we may or may not get to the last one here, okay, today. We can save it for another time, maybe even after the final, because I probably won't teach next week much. We'll just review. Um, so what does this mean, limits at infinity? It's kind of an oxymoron, because you can't actually be at infinity, but it just means that the little x under the lim is going to infinity. So this phrase means lim x goes to infinity, or lim x goes to negative infinity. So we call those limits at infinity, even though you can never actually go to infinity and say, I'm at, I'm at infinity. OK, you can, also say lat, you can also say limits to infinity if you want. And there is no such thing as infinity and beyond. OK, I hate to inform you, but I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. We can have an argument about infinity some other time, OK? All right, but um, let's take a look at number 15 on your worksheet. OK, so I'm going to borrow that for a second. Okay, so number 59 worksheet looked like this. And maybe you thought, I'm going to factor that thing. You know, that's kind of what you do. But did you understand the question? We have this crazy graph, right? Which I really, frankly, would rather not graph. I really am not excited about graphing it. So I don't want to really graph it. I just really want to understand which part of it. It's angry. The left end behavior, see? So I'm more interested in numbers out here than I am the asymptotes and stuff. You see what I'm saying? So maybe you factor this into x plus 3, you know, and x plus 1. Maybe you tried to factor the top and failed. None of that matters. Because that's for studying things near negative 3 or x is negative 1, that area. We're not even interested in that. We're interested in that left end behavior. So I'm going to take a totally different approach on a problem like this. I'm not going to factor it or study the domain. I am just going to ask, what would happen if I plugged in extremely negative numbers? Okay. So what would happen if you plugged in like negative a million into this? This is supposed to be a minus eight? Yeah. OK, thank you. I, did, I copied that wrong. So what would happen if I plugged in a negative 1 million, or you could say negative 10 to the sixth? What would happen if you plugged that in? OK. Which one's squared? Negative 10 to the This one's supposed to be squared right here. Thank you. Yeah. So I would have 2 times negative 1 million squared, plus 7 times negative 1 million, minus 8. And then at the bottom, I have negative 1 million squared, plus 4 times negative 1 million, plus 3. Okay. This gives me 2 trillion minus 7 million. So 2 times 10 to the 12th minus 7 million minus 8. No, it's plus 7 million. Plus 7 million. Thank you. Oh, uh, no, because the x is going to negative 10 to the 6. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right, yeah. But listen, guys, if I told you that the national debt was 2 trillion minus 7 million and 8, what's the national debt? 18 trillion dollars. Well, I know the national debt is not 2 trillion. Okay? But let's just, let's just bear with me, okay? If I told you that the the national debt is two trillion, you probably wouldn't think it was exactly two trillion, right? You'd think it's two trillion plus or minus some millions or billions, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, just some millions. Yeah. I mean when you hear a number that big, right, it's the trillions that you're listening to. 
So if I told you the national debt is two trillion minus seven million Maine, that's a two trillion dollar national deficit or debt. You understand what I'm saying? So what's going on is this number is so close to two trillion on the grand scheme that we can pretty much ignore these. Let's look at the denominator. The bottom is basically one trillion minus four million plus three. See? And we're doing a ratio. So we're dividing a number that's pretty close to two trillion by a number that's pretty close to one trillion. So two. So this comes out to be pretty close to two. Okay, it's not exactly, but it's pretty close to two. These guys are so powerful that this doesn't really matter much. Okay? Now, if I were to plug in not negative a million, but negative a billion, this effect would be even more exaggerated, and this would be even closer to two. And if you plug in negative one Google, it would be so close to two that the average calculator or computer couldn't tell the difference anyway. And that's what we're trying to study. The y value that we're close to. See? So the answer to this problem is simply two. Let me show you how to do it really, really fast. Okay? Here's how you show your work. And you should probably show some work. You look at this and you say, wow, I'm going to be plugging in negative million, negative billion, negative trillion. On top, only one of these terms is going to matter. That's the 2x squared. It's so much more influential than the others. And on the bottom, only one term is going to matter, and that's the x squared. So then you rewrite the problem like this, and then you realize, wait a minute, this just reduces. And now this problem is no harder than number one on the worksheet. Imagine the graph of y equals 2. And what happens to this y coordinate as you go indefinitely to the left? What happens to the y values? What are they getting closer to as you go this way? No, no, the y values. Oh, sorry. I want the limit, right? So you have to give me the y value when I drag, drag my finger out this way. Two. Two, exactly. See? So the answer is two all along. Okay, let's try another one real quick. Now that we have a little bit different way of doing it. Let's say you want to do limit as x goes to infinity. 3x squared plus 5x minus 6 over 2x cubed plus 6x minus 8. Because you're using large values of x, only one term in the numerator is going to matter. And only one term in the denominator is going to matter. I would like to know which terms. So if you're plugging in a billion, who's the winner? 3x squared, 5x, or negative 6? Negative 6. Negative <laughs> 6. 3x squared is going to dominate. Okay? And you have to do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, so who's going to dominate downstairs? 2x cubed. Now, is this identical to what I started with? Of course not. But the limit's identical. Okay? So these are truly equal. Not the expression, but the limit of the expressions are the same number. The conclusion would be the same, whether we use this ugliness or this beautifully simplified version. Okay? And therefore, we can now reduce this even more. So what's 3x squared over 2x cubed reduced to? 3 over 2x. 3 over 2x. And now you can say, what happens to this when x gets very, very large? The 2x. It's going to be 3 over 2 million, 3 over 2 billion, 3 over 2 trillion, 3 over 2 Google. What are we getting close to? Zero. Zero. OK? Let's try another one. Limit as x goes to infinity, uh, 2x to the third minus 5x squared over 4x. Let's actually make this um, 40,000x plus 6x cubed. Okay? We're trying to study values of x that are extremely large. 
What happens when you spit into the ocean? Nothing. Not much. Pretty much nothing. <laughs> you kill thousands of animals. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. You know, if you spit in the ocean, you might as well not have spit in the ocean. Like, you're not adding much H2O to the ocean when you spit. Right? One of these terms on the top is the ocean. The other is just spit. Okay, so who's more influential, 2x cubed or 5x squared? For large values of x, he's the winner. Even if you plug in 10, that's already 2,000, but this is only 500. And if you plug in a million, that's going to be 2 times 10 to the 18th. And this is big, but it's not anywhere close to that. It's like spit in the ocean. Okay? So that term dominates the numerator. Which term dominates the denominator? Man, 40,000 X. That's awfully big, though. What if X is a Google? If X is a Google, this will be the winner. Yes. Okay, so this basically reduces to the limit as X goes to infinity of what's 2X cubed over 6X cubed? One third. And the answer then is one third. Okay, so what, what happens is you start comparing top to bottom. Okay? Because you're really dealing with large numbers and the ratio between them. So, what this means is that there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. And this means there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And this means there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 third. See? That's what it means. Okay, I'd like to do one more example in my last three minutes, two minutes, okay? The question looks a little different. It'll say find the horizontal asymptotes. But the method is the same, okay? Find the horizontal asymptotes of f of x equals two to the x plus four x to the fourth over 3 times 2 to the x minus 20,000 x. Or let's just do 200 x to the fifth. Okay, bear with me one second. I just need to know who the oceans are top and bottom. But notice the question is a little different because the way it's worded. So I need to actually look at both sides. I'm going to do one for infinity and one for negative infinity. Give me 30 seconds, okay? I need to know which is the ocean for the top. Two to the x, if you plug in like 15 even, it's so big. Okay, it's huge. So two to the x is the winner here. Sorry, four to the x fourth. Four times x fourth. You're big, but not big enough here. Um, how about down here? Who's bigger? Three times two to the x or 200 x to the fifth? You'll find that this is quite large. Even if you go out to like x equals 100, it's way bigger than that is. So the winner is 3 times 2 to the x. And this reduces to what? 1 third. One third. Notice these cancel out. See? Okay, now hold on. What if we were going to negative infinity? You've got to be real careful here. This means you're going to plug in negative a million. Now who's bigger? That's going to be two to the negative million, see? And this is this is much bigger than that is now, see? So when we're doing this limit, it's this term that's the ocean, because that's going to go to 1 over 2 to the million. That's going to vanish. So this becomes four x to the fourth. And who's the winner on the bottom? This term. Exponentials are going to vanish. Okay? So this is negative 200 over x to the fifth. And now this is such a simple problem. Anyone could solve it. What happens to this when you start plugging in negative a million, negative a billion, negative a trillion? It's going to go to zero. So this one has two HAs. There's one at y equals one third, and there's one at y equals zero. One behavior on one side, one behavior on the other side.
Okay, I'll send you some book problems to do.